And before I go any further, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that we are recording. And uh, <clears throat> just so you know, uh, that obviously with being recorded, uh, any questions at the end, just remember that uh, we are going to be recording this. We are going to try to stick to the schedule. And so with that being said, what is on the agen agenda for today? So topics and goals. We're going to go ahead and introduce you to the Battle Flex if you are unfamiliar with that GNSS solution. We're going to review Blue Marble Geographics GIS, the uh, overall kind of the desktop software and complete package. We're going to have a pre-survey configuration demo. We're actually going to show you some live data collection and show you that post-processing manipulation of the demo data. We're going to stick, like I said, to the 30 minute runtime. And so about 25 minutes for the presentation, five minutes for the uh, Q&A. If we need to stay extra time for a few extra minutes at the end of the webinar, we certainly can. If you are not new to these webinars, um, this will be just following our kind of familiar format. At the end of the webinar, we'll also discuss our uh, hat contest that we do with each of these. So moving right along, again, keeping everybody's time uh, in the forefront of our mind. We know time is valuable and you've got a lot of stuff to be doing. Uh, and so what is the Battle Flex? Battle Flex is a GNSS, that's a global navigation satellite system, meaning that it's got multi-frequency, multi-constellation. With that, this GNSS device out in the field can collect roughly one centimeter of accuracy, horizontally speaking, uh, with RTK, real-time kinematic, via either NTRIP, that's AKA the internet, or through our new uh, offering and solution via base rover. That's where one flex is talking to a second flex via UHF radio. So completely survey grade option. We also have satellite corrections that are available basically worldwide, not in the poles. Uh, if you're gonna do some Arctic mapping, you're gonna wanna think base rover, but that's gonna get you about five to 12 centimeters. Uh, we also have our standard mode. So the flex out of the box is a 30 to 60 centimeter sub meter, uh, 30 to 60 centimeter unit. So one to two feet sub meter, and that's gonna be via SBAS. Uh, we can do post-processing, and as I mentioned earlier, multi-frequency, multi-constellation. We also uh, like to say that the Battle Flex is affordable. So we say accurate, we say affordable, really, truly, disruptively affordable. So uh, depending on which, uh, which uh, flavor of the Flex that you would like, the survey grade or you know, GIS grade, you can uh, start uh, pick up this product for as, you know, as affordable as $3,000. And for a fully survey grade rover, you're at $6,000. We have a pay to play option that if you are at all interested, um, you know, and budgets are tight and you want a job cost, extreme accuracy modes, uh, we can help you with that. That's a great circumstance or, or situation. If you want to collect normal GIS data, uh, say through the week, but on a Friday, you wanna fly a drone and set ground control with higher accuracy and precision. Uh, last but not least, we do have an integrated point one navigation um, uh, network. So if you want to use our network RTK system, you can. It's extremely affordable at $99 a month. Uh, and if you were to do a yearly subscription, that's actually will give you two months free. So for a thousand bucks, coast to coast, all of the contiguous United States, you have access to a really, really solid survey grade RTK network. Lastly, we like to say the Battle Flex is versatile, so easily adaptable to a variety of activities. It's portable, self-contained receiver. There's no wires, there's no external antennas. Everything is integrated into a single form factor that's about the size of a spray can, so it makes it very easy to utilize in, in tough field conditions. It's pole mounted on the bottom, can also be handheld ergonomically if you're doing GIS data collection. Uh, it's got a 5 8 inch normal survey connector. We do have adapters for a quarter 20 if you wanna go down to more like a hiking stick. 12 hour battery plus, depending on which modes you're using. So a very large lithium ion battery, which it should be noted that we have a USB on the go port, which means that you can plug in a battery pack purchased from Amazon for $20 and it can be actively charging your flex. So if you need to get more than say 12 hours battery in a day, that'd be a great opportunity. You can also back charge because it's on the go, uh, say your phone or tablet in a sticky situation. Uh, it's also versatile in terms of we work with iOS devices, so Apple, uh, Android, and Windows, so that we give you that flexibility to bring your own data controller, aka your smart device. It's what we call BYOD, or bring your own device. It's sort of a paradigm shift in the world of uh, land surveying and mapping. We've got screen and buttons, so obviously we look a little different than a lot of the other GPS out there, so you can do some 
uh, actual data collection and device management from the screen and buttons. Uh, it's an IP65 unit. And so what that means is it's water and dust relate, uh, resistant. Uh, it is quite a beast. And so no matter if you're in the, you know, the, the deserts of Arizona or uh, the tundra of North Canada, uh, it is extremely rugged and, and works great. And I guess last but not least, we just want to say it is a match made in heaven with global mapper mobile. And so that's really what we're going to be talking about today. So I am going to be quiet. I'm going to turn my uh, mic off so that I'm not distracting. And I'm going to pass the mic over to Jeff. And Jeff, why don't you tell us all about Global Mapper Mobile Pro? Sure. Thanks, Nick. And thanks for having me. Um, so Global Mapper Mobile Pro uh, is Blue Marble Geographic's uh, mobile data gathering solution. Um, we pair that with our desktop app, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, but the idea behind Global Mapper Mobile Pro is that um, we want our users to be able to collect data in the field however they need to. Um, I think that speaks really well to Nick's comment on bring your own device, um, where we want you to be able to use whatever device it is um, that you're working with. Um, you know, in this case, the Bad Elf Flex. Um, Global Mapper Mobile Pro has a, a variety of kind of advanced uh, data collection and you know location services depending on how you need to use uh, the app or what what your workflow is um, where we're talking about um, you know the survey grade accuracy if you need to use RTK um, that's something you can stream into the device the device has its own built-in ntrip clients um, you know if if you ever needed to and you were just working on your mobile phone maybe you're you know, your battle flexes battery dies right when you're out in the field, you could use, you know, your device's location services, of course, at, at a much lower accuracy. Um, but again, generally how this process worked is we would prep some data in Global Mapper Desktop. Um, so Nick, maybe could you switch me over to the next slide? And so Global Mapper Desktop is a, you know, comprehensive all-in-one GIS application. Today, of course, we're going to talk about it from the perspective of setting data up for, you know, field data gathering, um, but everything from advanced 3D analysis, um, whether we're talking about, you know, photogrammetric drone image processing, uh, LIDAR and point cloud analysis, terrain manipulation, Python scripting, um, all of it can be done in Global Mapper. Um, so it really allows us to, you know, think of a full workflow. I'm, I'm setting up my project in desktop. Um, I'm sending it to my, my field data users. Uh, they're then sending me data back for further analysis. Um, so it really lets us encompass a, a, a solid all-in-one geospatial workflow. One thing I just want, want to focus on for a second today, um, some, of the, some of the higher points of Global Mapper Mobile before we get into to the desktop work and the field work. Um, we now have the ability to wirelessly uh, send data from desktop to mobile devices. So if you're someone who's prepping work for you know, a handful of field users um, and they're, they're all in the office on the same Wi-Fi network, you can push data to them. We'll look at that shortly. Um, I believe Dave today is going to use Bad Elf's Ntrip clients um, for his work. But if you know, very often I'm just you know testing through a lot of devices, or you know I'm always working in the same state. I'll use Global Mapper Mobile's built-in Entrip client um, and connect to my my state sources. Uh, so the app, as we'll see a little bit, is very um, you know versatile depending on how uh, you need to work with it. So let's go ahead here um, and we'll take a look, a brief look at how, how I might prep some data uh, in Global Mapper before sending it out into the field. And so we should here now have a Global Mapper desktop app up on my display. Um, what we're looking at is just some very generic source data. Um, more or less anything that we can work with in desktop can be sent out into the field for mobile. Um, whether or not that's appropriate for a given workflow, you know, depends on, on what your goals are, right? So right now what I have is uh, the vector boundary of a park and um, the location of an NGS survey monument that Dave's going to be uh, working on updating out in the field. Now, as I'm prepping my data, 
um, I might want to add a base map for my visualization purposes, just so I can see a little bit where I am, what I'm working with. You know, it's always nice to have that context. Uh, this happens to be a map that I loaded from file. Uh, Global Mapper, though, has a full built-in uh, online source data set, the majority of which is free. So whether you're looking for terrain data, imagery, land cover, LIDAR, whatever the case may be, you have the ability to stream it right into the application, um, you know, really as long as you have an internet connection. One thing I'm going to do um, now that I have some imagery loaded is I'm going to go ahead and just change the styling of my features because I notice now that they don't stand out that well against my imagery. So I'm just going to give them a very basic, you know, red should stand out fine. And maybe I'll do the same for the point. Just so that I can see it a little better on my screen. So now those should stand out for me where my survey marker is and the park that I'm working with. When it comes to the next steps of, I'm going to assume here, okay, all of my data is prepped properly, ready to go. Um, I want to think about how I want to get that, that data to, in this case, Dave or whoever my field user may be. And to do that, we have a, a tool we call the mobile data management tool. And this allows me to do two things. So first, let me go ahead, I'm just going to open the mobile app here as an example. So anytime I have the mobile app open on an Android or iOS device that's connected to the same network I am, I can browse for that device and find it to wirelessly send data to it. Now you're going to see anything on your network that can receive a signal, right? So here's my my Google Pixel and my, you know, some of my, my smart home stuff, right? But I'm going to choose to send the data to my Pixel. And now I can browse and decide where I want to send it on that phone. I can then go ahead and choose what I want to send out to my, my user in the field. Now, in this case, it's probably not appropriate for me to send out any base map data. Um, the reason being, um, the mobile data or the mobile app has the ability to stream online data just as the desktop app does. In this case, I know my Dave, my field worker is going to be somewhere where he has cell service or some type of network connection. Uh, if that's the case, he can stream in any base map that he needs. So I'm going to save myself some space in my file and not export that imagery. What I will export are the two vector features. So I've selected those layers. If I needed, I could add any other layers that I have from file. So any data, again, that Global Mapper supports, um, and it does support over 300 geospatial formats. So anything you work with can be brought in, and the vast majority of it can be sent out into the field to mobile. Before I send this data out, I want to touch on uh, what we call uh, feature templates or template layers. And these are layers that essentially have a structure for a data type, so point line or polygon area feature, uh, and then also a set of attributes. So I'm going to go ahead and create a point template here. And the idea behind this is that I am specifying a data layer that Dave is going to gather data into in the field. And the reason that I'm doing this is because I want to make sure that my field user is gathering the proper data as he's recording information in the field. And so one of the things that Dave's going to look at today is surveying some trees and some tree health. And so I'm gonna set up some attributes and some information that he's going to have to uh, populate when he records um, his features. And I also want to make sure I know who's recording my data, because if I have multiple people out in the field, I want them to say, oh, this was Dave or Jeff or, you know, Nick, whoever gathered this data. And so once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and then add it to my package that I'm going to be sending to mobile. We'll give it the same name, trees. And now we'll see that we have a third layer here. Um, and this layer is that template layer. It will have no features in it yet because nothing has been recorded. Um, I certainly could put features in there if I wanted to, uh, but there's no real reason to at this stage. 
and then I will um, go ahead and choose to upload it to the device. Um, I could also save it locally if I chose. There's no reason I couldn't save this locally, um, maybe use an email or any other file sharing service to send the data to the device. Um, you know, right in this case, I would probably do that. Dave and I are not in the same location, uh, so we won't be on the same network. So maybe I would choose save as, save the file local, um, then send it to Dave out in the field. But at this point, so the, the desktop prep side of things is done, and I can go ahead and uh, hand it back off to Bad Elf to show us what they did out in the field. Thanks, Jeff. That was awesome. Um, love the simplicity there. The streamlinedness uh, doesn't get much easier. Love to hear the integrated NTRIP client as well. That's Those are some really great features. So let me uh, fire up my screen again. And we are going to do a live field demo with Dave. So hopefully uh, all the technology works and this video comes across, you may have to increase the volume on your end. Hey, welcome back everyone. This is David out here at Camelback Park in beautiful Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, you can see I have my bad elf set up right here on our survey pole. our two meter survey pole right here. And so we're ready to go ahead and collect some points once we get our app set up. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna switch over to our Bad Elf uh, Flex app over here. Uh, this is free on the Android or iOS store. And you can see we already have connection going. So we're gonna get the RTK corrections. We're gonna use uh, point one navigation network, but you can use your local RTK network as well, of course. So let's get that going. I hit the button there. You can see uh, the correction data is already flowing, and the Battle Flex is going to use that correction data to give you survey grade accuracy. So let's switch over to our Global Mapper mobile uh, app right here. Uh, we already have our maps uh, loaded and configured on my device, but first we're going to select uh, a couple settings to configure our Battle Flex uh, integration with our app right here. So we're gonna to go to the top right, connect with the device. You can see since I'm already connected via Bluetooth, our battle flex is showing up on the list. We'll hit okay. You can see it was a success. Awesome, so let's go down to advanced GPS. Uh, let's check out some of our info. So right now we do have an RTK fix. If you look under fix right there, uh, which is great. Our confidence uh, looks great as far as our HDOP, uh, attributes go and our accuracy is looking good too uh, with about two centimeter accuracy right now so if we go over to satellites we can see what the flex is seeing right now here's our uh, sky view as long as the signal to noise ratio from all of our gps satellites okay and here is our nema stream as well uh, so you can see all of the corrections coming in from our uh, gps satellites so let's hit done over here Finally, let's go to app configuration. We're gonna scroll down to GPS down here at the bottom, make sure our pole height is set correctly. Uh, it is, we're using a two meter pole and our antenna face center is gonna be 23 centimeters above the bottom of the battle flex. And scrolling up over here, uh, you can see we wanna see our best accuracy. We wanna see the accuracy, always show the GPS info as well as our distance and bearing. Uh, we're gonna be using this record distance interval function as well when we capture linear data. So let's go back, I think we're ready to collect now. Let me open up my map. You can see I have two maps loaded up. We have the Arizona Central map right here. So this is gonna show all of our coordinates in uh, Arizona Central State Plain coordinate system. So for any surveyors or anyone else using uh, State Plain, it's gonna be very useful. If you look at the bottom of the screen, you can see the GPS coordinates appear on the screen along with our elevation. So let's pop back. We're gonna actually record most of our stuff in uh, our NAD 80. Let's uh, go to NAD 83, and you can see on our screen, uh, it's going to be the same map, but just our, we are using lats and lawns in our RTK coordinate system, which is going to be NAD 1983-2011. So, we're ready to collect data right now. Let's hit right here. Uh, let's do GPS centered. You can see our blue dot show up on the device. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit on that. You can see right now I'm in the southeast corner of the park, and we're ready to go around and start collecting points. See, I've already recorded some trees along this pathway right here. And I'll show you how to record a point. So if you go to the bottom center where you see the pencil and those dots, let's hit that. We'll do GPS tap so you can just tap anywhere on the screen to record a point. 
uh, we'll choose our trees data layer that we've created. Hit OK. We can give it a name as well uh, for this particular tree. Do a palm right here, and that'll label it on the map. You can see all of our attributes right here, all of our high accuracy uh, data collection attributes. So if scrolling down right here, you can see your uh, altitude, uh, the fixed time, your dilution of precision measurements, your latitudes and longitudes, uh, of course your pole height that we just set, uh, as well as our elevation here at the bottom. So let's go ahead and save that by hitting OK. And let's collect more, some more points. I'll report back to you uh, and we'll collect uh, linear points as well as a polygon of a lake. And then finally we'll capture a control of the NGS monument. All right, we're over here at Camelback Lake. So we're gonna walk the perimeter and I'll show you how to collect a polygon. Switch back to over to our app and we're gonna just select the polygon digitizing feature in the bottom right. We're gonna do GPS auto distance, which is a nice function. So every 10 meters we move, we'll record a vertice. Let's do that, and yes. So we can still collect points right now, but we're gonna go ahead and collect our polygon. But if we do encounter any trees, we can select those as well. All right, we completed our lap of the lake. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. So we'll hit check. Uh, you see, we're gonna do, actually let's select our lake layer right here. We'll collect that layer right here. You see our uh, feature symbology is already set up for us. We can name it as well. So let's call this Camelback Lake. Is it okay? Okay. All right, there we go. And you can see our lake is digitized. Let's go over and start our uh, linear collection. So we're just gonna collect the path on the way back to the car over here. So let me just make my way over. We'll hit this right here. It's going to be the same process as the polygon. We're going to do GPS auto distance. Yes, we do, just in case we run across any trees. And I'll talk to you once we get everything uh, set up. Finally, we'll get our NGS point. So I've captured a bit of the trail right here, and I just come across a palm tree. So I'm going to want to collect this. So if we go over here, just tap the screen, hit trees, hit OK. Uh, we're good to go, looks like. We have our over metadata saves. Now it saved the tree where I'm standing right now, even though I'm still collecting the line, which is a nice feature. All right, now that we wrapped up our survey, we're gonna try to find this NGS point. So to find the NGS point, uh, we're gonna go ahead and just select one of these two points on the map. There's actually two monuments uh, right next to this bridge right here. So if we select one of those, let me do that. You can see that line is drawn between me, uh, that arrow on the map, and the NGS point. So if you look all the way at the bottom, you can see the distance as well as the bearing. So the bearing is 100 degrees, which means it's almost directly east from me, as well as the distance about 70 meters away. So we're gonna start heading over there. All right, guys, we're set up here at the corner of McDonald and Hayden right now. Uh, you can see there's actually gonna be two NGS monuments here. There's gonna be one right here. I'll zoom in on that as well as one over there on the pillar. So we're gonna set up on this one and take our final uh, NGS point and we're gonna use this as control and then that's gonna wrap up our survey. Okay, that was awesome. Uh, really appreciate that, Dave. Um, I, I just have to make a quick comment. I, I think that linear feature capability while you're walking a linear feature, let's say a curb line, but then you need to hit something and collect a point along said linear feature. That is a, that's a really neat function. Dave, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause my screen here uh, so that you can, yep, there you go. You were able to pull it up. Yeah, thanks, Nick. So uh, here's the results of the survey. So you can see it was not exhausted by any means, but I did capture a few trees over here in the park. So if I turn off the base map right here, it makes it a little easier to see everything. Uh, you can go ahead and select these features after the fact and uh, see your uh, your accuracies at the time. Just by right clicking, you can cycle through all these features and identify them. Uh, you can see the geometries saved in our NAD 1983 coordinates, uh, as well as any uh, attributes or metadata you may have saved with all the, the points. So if we go up here, you can see uh, we selected our trail right here. Here's a trail through the center of the park. Uh, here's the lake as well. Uh, you have your area measurements 
And uh, let me scroll up to our NGS monuments, just north of our survey right here. And if I uh, scroll in over there, uh, you can get all the information about those collected points as well. So scrolling out, I would like to uh, emphasize that if you are working in state plane, blue, ma uh, blue marble makes it super easy to go ahead and project your coordinates. So if you go up to tools, uh, down to configure, I will go to projection over here. Uh, so we collected in 1983, but let's say we want to use our uh, state plane coordinate system. We, we can go over here, select Arizona Central. That's our relevant uh, coordinate system for our area. Hit apply, hit OK. And now if you look at the bottom right, as I move my mouse around, you can see everything is going to be projected in that state plane system, as well as if I select a, a point right here, you can see the geometry now shows up. Uh, with the uh, northeast and eastings rather than lats and lawns, although you can still see the lats and lawns right here as well. So uh, that's about completes our survey. If we go to the top left, uh, go to file export, we can export to uh, vector formats right here. And as uh, Jeff was saying before, I mean, Blue Marble, uh, the Global Mapper Pro handles basically any file you can think of. So if you want to get into a CAD program, you can select DWG or DXF. Uh, as well, if you just wanted a CSV, you can export that way and scroll down, use shapefile and any other format you might want. So that about uh, wraps things up. And I think uh, we're running out of time here. Maybe a time for a quick uh, Q&A session. I'll stop sharing here. Thanks, Dave. That was awesome. Uh, before we get to question and answer, I just want to make mention, like we always do, we have a free Bad Elf uh, hat contest. These are, uh, you can see the one I'm wearing, um, but these are fitted hats. And at anybody that's uh, been uh, attended this webinar has uh, the ability to win one of these hats. All we would ask is that if you haven't done it yet, please follow Bad Elf on LinkedIn uh, and or Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Uh, we'd like to see you on there and just make a quick post about the webinar. Give us some feedback uh, if you have any further questions. But if you follow us and give us a question uh, or mention the webinar, you will be automatically enrolled. Uh, we'll be giving away a few hats. So thank you again for attending. Uh, before we totally run out of time, I know we have a few questions. We can certainly go over um, if, if, uh, if you uh, have another question that you would like answered. So let me just pull up the chat here. Okay, so we've got a few questions. The first one, and I believe Dave answered via text, but um, I'll just read it out loud so everybody can see it. It was asked if, uh, can the bad elf locate a GPS coordinate in the field, for example, a water valve and use Global Map or mobile bad elf to update the coordinate back? I have issues getting a device in the field that will help crew va crews find valves that have been covered up. So I'm mainly looking for something to find, not much as collect. Um, so Dave mentioned, yes, you can. I, I demonstrate how to locate a feature, in this case, a survey marker at the end of the field demo. Global Mapper Mobile allows to select a water valve on the map, and it will display your distance and bearing from the selected feature. Um, so if that is what you were asking to stake out or relocate a point, Global Mapper can certainly do that. If you're talking about potentially using some type of locator device to find a valve that has been covered, uh, that's a little bit of a different story. Uh, you may need to use a third party hardware in that, in that case. Let's see here. So we've got a question. Uh, is this demo with just one flex unit with extreme mode activated? And that is correct. This was just with one bad elf flex in the extreme accuracy mode, uh, receiving RTK corrections via NTRIP. Let's see here. We've got, is the monthly subscription required in addition to the tokens to access the higher RTK accuracy? That's a great question. Um, so we have a couple different ways you can do this. You can have the Bad Elf Flex standard, right? And so that's that 30 to 60 centimeter accuracy. Uh, with the standard unit, you can utilize a token. The token then engages the extreme accuracy mode for 24 hours. At that point, you would be, um, as the user, required to uh, select an RTK network of your choice. And so whether you're using a state-run RTK network, a third-party network, say like SmartNet, 
or you wanted to use our network, you, you could pay for that. But basically the token engages the ability to utilize RTK. If you have a unlock extreme flex, so the higher end version, you do not need to use a token to engage the higher accuracy mode because you already have it engaged. At that point, the token um, doesn't help getting RTK. Now, the one other comment in there is the tokens baked into that $25 a day price also gives you the ability to log into the satellite based corrections. So not using LTE or the internet to receive your NTRIP correction. You could use satellite corrections. That token has that cost built in, which is a good option if you are off grid or perhaps in a developing country where the infrastructure for RTK networks are not there. We've got another question. Um, this is a good application. Is it accessible for free? Jeff, could you talk about um, quickly what would be the best way to uh, get involved, try out uh, Global Mapper? Yeah, sure. Um, so Global Mapper Mobile, the mobile app that we saw today, is at baseline free. Um, the caveat being the pro version is required um, for any of the advanced, uh, what we call advanced GPS work. So using a bad L for any external um, in GNSS device. Um, Global Mapper Desktop is a, a paid for GIS desktop application. Um, that app starts, don't quote me, but less than $1,000 perpetually um, with subscription options as well. Um, so much more affordable, I think, similar to Bad Elf than a lot of our competition is um, with a very comparable um, suite of functionality. One, one thing I will tangent off of this that I actually forgot to mention to Dave, um, for anybody who's doing, you know, I was thinking of the uh, survey marker update. On top of, you know, the ability to use an RTK, there's a function in Global Mapper Mobile um, that allows you to essentially GPS average a point. So you could sit and average a location over time, maybe a bit redundant with the RTK, but if you're not in RTK mode uh, or extreme mode, I guess you guys call it, um, certainly something that could be useful to you. That's great. Thank you, Jeff. We got another question. Um, can you use two units of this device and set up as a base and rover? Uh, you absolutely can. And so the Battle Flex, we just recently announced uh, this capability uh, in an official capacity. You can Google search it, or if you want to email us at sales at badelf.com, I can certainly send you the link. But yes, if you have um, the Battle Flex in the extreme accuracy mode, uh, we have a UHF radio solution now. So if you can imagine two flex units, uh, the listed price, our MSRP is 6,000 a piece. So you're 12,000 in, uh, and then additionally, you would need to get the radios, which uh, the two radios all in are roughly 4,000. As Jeff said, don't exactly quote me depending on accessories and things, but you can do a complete base rover setup uh, survey grade uh, for roughly 16,000, which as Jeff also mentioned, makes us um, pretty affordable comparative to a lot of the competition out there. Um, m m honestly, less than half uh, than a lot of the, the, other, the other options on the market today. And what is nice is the Battle Flex. If you have it in the base rover mode, you can use it on base rover mode Monday through Friday. And then on a Saturday, you can take either of those and they can become rovers at any moment. So we call it the flex because it is a very flexible unit, flexible in accuracy, flexible in price, flexible in what you can connect it to, iOS, Android, Windows. And then inevitably, as we've shown through Global Mapper, you know, we have the versatility to be able to connect uh, with a, a plethora of different solutions. And we have a lot of great business partners uh, uh, like Global Mapper that we, we work really well with. And so, um, it, it is a base rover capable unit, but even in base rover, you can swap it in and out if you'd like to use that as a rover uh, on its own. Okay, um, so we've got some endorsements. Appreciate it, Julian. Uh, Julie, Julie says Global Mapper is an excellent product, very cost effective. Uh, Nick um, from West Virginia, our friend, says great job, everyone. Fully endorsed both systems, so we've got a user of both the app and the hardware. Um, Let's see here, we've got another question uh, and I appreciate everybody sticking around for these questions. Certainly we've gone over the 30 minutes at this point, but we'll, we'll stick around as, as long as the questions keep coming. 
Uh, so the tokens enable 24 access to the Bad Elf and Trip Caster without the monthly subscription. That is correct, Stanley. So the token gives you, it basically turns the switch, it turns the governor underneath the hood on, and it gives you the ability to connect to whatever RTK network you would like. Now, what I can tell you is you can utilize the Bad Elf RTK network. And we can talk offline about how we can do that pricing wise. Um, but yes, it would be up to the user to um, find that RTK network of their choice. What we are part of the course kind of response in the United States, at least, about 50% of the states have free uh, RTK networks that you can tap into. You just need to find the right person to talk to. The other half of the states have for pay options, I believe California, Caltrans for an example is about $500. I believe it's a one time or once a year fee. I can't per, uh, totally remember. Uh, for an example, in Texas where I live, you can get on the text.rtk network for free as long as you're doing uh, text.work. And so first option is always try to find that free version, quite frankly. From there, there are some other free options out there. UNAVCO from the government is really good. Uh, but there are also really good third party for pay options like SmartNet um, from the Hexagon company. Part of the reason we, you still are required to pick your RTK network of choice is that we sell this unit all over, all over the world. And so infrastructure is not the same everywhere. And so it'd be unfair to charge people without getting that ability to get RTK, say, in a developing country. Uh, and so yeah, you would still be required. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and if, if you need, uh, we can certainly do a follow-up call and we can go through the kind of minutia of all of the different options and, and uh, you know, what would be available to you. Um, let's see here. Saren says, thank you. Really nice presentation. Well, we appreciate that. Is there any other questions out there for either Jeff, myself, or Dave? I can also say, well, well we'll give you one more second to ask questions. I personally, um, in another life before working with that Elf directly, uh, I worked at a company in a telecommunication industry and we absolutely used Global Mapper. A little bit outside of the purview of this demonstration today, but we used it for LiDAR. At the time, they were, the software um, was uh, way ahead of the game and uh, had some of the best LiDAR processing, point cloud processing tools on the market and they still do. So just love to continue to advocate for Global Mapper. It's a, it's a very good cost affordable solution. Okay. That's great. Thanks, for, oh. thanks for saying that, Nick. Um, it was really great for me today to see how somebody other than myself, right? I'm usually the one making these videos. So seeing how, you know, one of our partners would use Global Map or Mobile and what's important to you and your users just on these questions um, has been a great insight. So thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, we appreciate you. We appreciate your product. And uh, I'll leave you with this. Um, thank you, Robert, for the other uh, kind words. I'll leave you with this, that uh, Bad Elf has a pioneer package. Uh, we've talked about it in a past webinar. Uh, the Pioneer package wraps um, all the hardware and accessories you would need. Um, but most importantly, the Pioneer package has training. And so Dave and I uh, lead the training efforts at Bad Elf, but we will actually train you on your app of choice and Global Mapper is part of that purview. And so if you have Global Mapper, you have an intent to use Global Mapper, we can hook you up with Jeff and his team to get you the software you need, but we will actually train you uh, in their application. So again, we, we are fully supportive of them. If you need any help, let us know. I would also just offer the Global Mapper website is great and there are a ton of videos and resource materials out there in the world if you have any follow-up questions. So without uh, wasting anybody else's time, I just wanna say thank you again for everybody attending today. Dave, thank you for going out and collecting data in the field. And Jeff, we appreciate your time supporting Bad Elf. If you have any questions, please follow up with us at sales at bad-elf.com. Thanks, everybody.